I'm here now in the Sagamore Ballroom at Gen Con 2008 with Bruce Cordell, RPG developer at Wizards of the Coast, as well as Kickboxer, uh, debutante extraordinaire. <laughs> Many hidden talents, I guess. That's correct. So tell us a little bit about Gen Con so far. We've uh, kind of had lots of interesting and exciting stuff. So what, what has been your Gen Con been like? Well, um, my Gen Con has been pretty darn good, I have to say. Um, I've been really busy, so the time's been flying by you know, so quickly. I'm a little sad, actually. It's the last day already. But um, the thing that was on my mind the most, because I had to give the seminar for the new Forgotten Realms, the Secrets of the Realms, I had to really think about that and really get prepared, and I was really gratified at how well the seminar actually ended up going, so that was pretty good. I think that was my highlight. And then after that was over, I was able to more appreciate how much people in general really seemed to like 4th edition. Also very gratifying. Um, the questions people asked at the, at the seminar, and we talked a little bit before that um, over Soders, and um, you said you know, you're like, geez, I don't know. Are they going to be really upset? Are they? What, what? So, what was their kind of state of mind, and what type of questions were they asking? Well, their state of mind. I mean, it was a it was a large mix in the crowd. There were certainly a lot of people there that uh, knew a lot about what was happening already. You know, they were connected. They were online. Right. They knew all the stuff. But there was actually probably about 25 percent of the crowd, as I discovered later, that really came in going, really? There's a change in the realms. <laughs> what wow. are you talking about? So That's interesting. It was because I was kind of talking to all the folks that knew about it, and as I discovered later, people coming up to me going, spell plague? Because uh, <laughs> I would kind of just kind of yeah. glanced over that part right. right at the beginning with one slide, and they were like, what's going on here? So, so it was kind of interesting. But, you know, 75% of the crowd knew what was going on, and I was, I was talking to them for the most part. And... Um, the main keys being it moved forward 100 years in time. That's right. That's right. Mainly we wanted to get ahead. We wanted to put new mystery back into the realms. We wanted to make the realms as new and as exciting and as fresh as when the realms first came out, mainly. And it's hard to do that with an established property that's 20, 30, however many years old. Um, so we had to... Uh, and the challenge there is because there's been so much done in every nook and cranny that's right. That it's, it's, you, you keep kind of looking for corners you haven't explored and said, oh, hey, here's... Exactly. As each new novel author would try and write a new novel, we'd be like, well, there's been 30 novels set in this area. Why don't we go over to this forest over here on the edge of the map and, uh, hey, I can write a novel there and you know, nothing's really happening out here. And uh, so that, that's what was happening. People are going farther and farther afield. And uh, the way it's kind of like real estate development, you know, they're like, and then someone else comes along and says, hey, this forest right, oh, you know, <laughs> that Greenwood, that no good. There's five dragons living in this forest. <laughs> <laughs> if you dig deep, deep enough, there probably are five dragons living yeah. in every forest in the background, so. Uh, but, you know, one of our goals was to say that we're not retconning anything. Everything that happened, happened. And the easiest right. way to do that was to say 100 years have passed, and three generations of humans have come and gone. What's happened since then? We're not, no, we don't know for sure. We're not going to tell you everything that's happened, and that injects the mystery back in. And for new players, um, they don't have to know all this stuff. They don't have to be up to date on what's going on, because no one is up to date on what's going on. And they can pick up the book. It's a fresh look. It's a fresh take on the Forgotten Realms. That's that's really a big thing, and I noticed that with a lot of games. Uh, I interviewed Monty Cook about his take on World of Darkness, and one of the concerns there was, you know, World of Darkness has you know a lot of background and, and history, and if you don't know that, you feel kind of. When I played it, I felt as a dis at a disadvantage. And the same thing with Forgotten Realms, only maybe ten times as much because there's just so much written there that uh, you know I don't want to look stupid. Right, I look stupid a lot. I don't want to look more stupid <laughs> by going in and saying something like, no, don't you know that there are five dragons? that far <laughs> everybody knows that it's been posted on bulletin boards and towns for years and years right. so this way it's kind of like well nobody really knows you're all kind of learning together right sense of discovery and, and part of that is you'd say a business decision right we want to get more right. new players in to help the hobby right. to make these yeah. things we make sense to do financially we want a new generation of players coming in um, we also want to uh, reinvigorate the line, right? You can't keep coming out with the same old stuff over and over. People will stop buying it, and that will be the end of support for Forgotten Realms. And no one who loves the Forgotten Realms wants to see the Forgotten Realms die off like that. So 
in a way, it's something that had to be done in order to get ahead of any sort of stagnation that might have happened five years ago. So this way, everything's fresh, everything is ready to go. What was probably the single most controversial, other than Rich Baker must be stopped, which they yell at me when I bring that up, <laughs> for not taking it seriously enough. <laughs> should be stopped, but for reasons that have nothing to do with Forgotten Realms. Um, what, what do you think was the most controversial? Well, I would say it was probably a split between the 100-year jump and the event called the Spell Plague. And uh, the Spell Plague was, you know, there was actually a really good re story reason for the Spell Plague, which was the goddess of magic, Mistra, was killed. And when she died, all her reigns, her hold over the weave, which was magic, it's magic in the Forgotten Realms, uh, just dispersed. And all the areas of wild magic, which already kind of existed, everything just kind of touched off. And it was a conflagration. It was almost like a magical virus that burned through magic, burned through flesh, burned through cosmological walls. And uh, things in some places were completely wiped away, other places lightly touched. But the consequences of all these dramatic events rippled throughout the entire realms and, and beyond. The cosmology itself was uh, altered over a period of time. If I was a, a hardcore Forgotten Realms player and I wanted to move to, to the new Forgotten Realms, would you say this is probably the thing that I most need to be able to wrap my, my head around and understand? And if I can get this, everything else will kind of fall into place for me? You know, I think that in a way we we focus too much on the spell plague in the uh, in selling the Forgotten Realms. And in fact, um, the spell plague, when the new Forgotten Realms begins, has happened 90 some years in the past. Hmm. So that means that for most people now living in the realms, unless they happen to live next to an active pocket of spell plague, which still exists here and there, they don't even really think about it anymore. Right. And there are some spell scarred people walking around with some strange burning blue tattoos. They're like, oh, don't stand too next to close to that guy. He might be infectious, maybe. You know, people don't really know how it works yet, but it's a uh, for, for so so anyway. So for a hardcore player, they could come in and they could not talk about the spell plague if they didn't want to. Right. Or they could embrace it. They could go to the plague changed land and uh, just jump in and try and get themselves a spell card, spell scarred, which you know might be kind of fun. Uh, yeah, I guess <laughs> could be dangerous. Could, could be, be dangerous, fun. But so bottom line, it's uh, people can jump in and play. It's really not. You know, oh, yeah. this is it's designed to be easy, hop in, have some fun, don't worry about And in fact the the book design itself kind of follows the fourth edition ethic, which is kind of everything falls on a one or two page spread. Which you know sounds like oh it's gonna be constraining, but in fact it was actually very freeing. You could say, No, we're gonna give this region all the space it deserves. Here and here, here's Thay, here's Sembia, here's Akinol, here's Taman, right. here's Cormier. And it, it flows so nicely and so easily. Um, same on the player side of things. Um, you know, they got their new races, they got their new class, the sword mage. They got the Ganassi. People are going to love the Ganassi uh, regardless if you're playing the Forgotten Realms or not because they're a sweet race. Drow, of course, are written up as a playable race. Um, and you have a lot of uh, feats and uh, other interesting things on the player side of things uh, and powers uh, in the uh, new Forgotten Realms. So, excellent. Well, Bruce Cordell, RPG developer, Wizards of the Coast. Thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for talking to me, man.